Welcome back, friends. In this video, we're gonna be talking about data-driven decisions. And if you wanna be successful in today's modern business environment, this is a mental shift that you need to make. And it's a mental shift moving from making decisions using your gut instincts to making decisions based on data. And so in this video, we're gonna be talking about how to use data to drive your business. Before computers, so many business decisions were made by gut instinct or intuition. But now that we have computers, we have so much data that is at our fingertips. The problem is that so many businesses today still operate as if all that data does not exist. They either do not know the data exists in their accounting systems, or they don't know how to pull it out. They are still making decisions the old way, but we don't have to do that anymore. If you can figure out how to pull out that data and then use that data to inform your decisions, you will increase business performance. I want to look at two common business decisions as examples. Number one, should I increase my staff? And number two, should I purchase new equipment? These sound like simple questions, but they're actually very complex. Your goal as a business leader is to make the mental shift from answering these questions by themselves to breaking the questions down and making data-driven decisions. I'm going to give you a process for performing data-driven decisions. Number one, break questions down. Two, find the data. And three, track the data. Let's look at the first question. Should I increase my staff? You can break this question down into two smaller questions. Do I have the money? And do I have a need? And each of these more defined questions can be supported by data. So let's look at the question, do I have the money? There are two data sources that can help you answer this. Cash available and your forecast. So for cash available, you can look at your working capital and whether you have funds to cover an additional salary. For forecast, you'll want to know revenue projections and determine whether it's likely you'll be able to cover increased salary costs. Ideally, you'll want to put quantifiable metrics in each area. Now, this is going to be different for every business, depending on the volatility of your revenue trends. But here is one potential example. So for cash available, you can hire if you have half of the annual salary already available. For forecast, you can hire if reliable revenue streams with 90% certainty will be able to cover the annual salary expense for the first year. Let's look at the second question. Do I have a need? Does your business really need another employee? Is there data that can support this? And for this, you can look at a couple of different things. You can look at overtime, delays, or process numbers. Now, a lot of people look at overtime. Personally, I don't like using overtime metrics because excessive overtime can easily be the result of a manager who does not know how to schedule their people's time and not necessarily an indicator of business need. Delays are a much better metric. Are there areas in your business that are running slow? that are constantly behind, people can't keep up with their work? Are these delays because there's not enough staff to perform the work? And then we can look at process numbers. How many items are being processed? Is complexity increasing? Is the business getting busier? Increased workload could indicate the need to hire. In summary, if you're thinking of hiring more staff, there's a story happening that you need to be able to tell. Your business will be growing, you're expecting more revenue, and you need more people to perform the work. So the data you're gathering should support that story. If it does not, maybe you should not be hiring right now. Let us go back to the process. So now we have broken the questions down, now we need to go and find the data. You can then go into the financial system and pull out the data to answer these questions. And finally, you can track this data over time. So this is not gonna be the only time you hire new people. Maybe this is information you can track over time. One of the greatest things that you can do as an accountant or a finance professional is to find the data for your leadership to help inform their decisions. 
my hope is that all of this helps you understand the mental shift I've been talking about. So we've been looking at the complex question, should I increase my staff? And instead of making the decision using gut instinct, we break down the question and use data to guide the decision. Let's look at the next question. Should I purchase new equipment? And we can use the same process. Break questions down, find the data, and track the data. There are a lot of capital expenditure analysis spreadsheets available with different methods to calculate ROI or return on investment for equipment. But the goal is all the same. You want to be able to take these complex business decisions, put them into an Excel spreadsheet with your data, and let that guide your decision. One final warning, data is not perfect. And next week, I'm actually gonna make a video about some of the common problems that people find when dealing with data. There are actually a number of things that you need to watch out for, so stay tuned for that video. I hope you found this helpful. Now I wanna hear from you. If you use data-driven decisions in your business, go ahead and leave a comment down below. Let me know. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Zach from Wolves and Finance. Let's go out and make some money.